Hello YouTube, so welcome to another documentary series video and in this video I'm gonna train the second phase of my 400k FTMO which is a verifi verification phase and this time they a little change in my game plan I will update you later and again thank you for all for the support but if again if you are seeing this video then I'm not sure if you will be happy but again I'm very happy because at usual this theory this time I require myself to be disciplined I require myself to be following the plan and respecting the risk and only then when I pass the challenge then I'm gonna upload the video if I fail to follow my plan and if I fail to manage my risk, I will not upload this video. I mean, that is one of the motivation. That's one of the reason that keep me going. Because if I upload a video and they no values and people just see me gambling around with big loss sign without in the random trade without any reason, and somehow some people think trading is easy and some people should flow it blindly they're gonna hurt themselves that's reason why this time I'm trying my I'm trying my best to be a better trader to be a better human being and to be like a better version of who I am every single day I push my limits and every single day I remind myself that I want to give values and this video I want to make it valuable and have something that can motivate and inspire not only others but most importantly I want to inspire myself to keep pushing so welcome to the video and I hope you will enjoy it see you on uh, the day one the game plan hello YouTube so the game plan for the second phase of FTMO 400k challenge the verification phase will be something like this I'm gonna use fixed risk but now instead of using 1% I only trade Euro 0.5% and it may take me longer to pass but it's like it is a safe way to pass and I'm I want to pass more than like, like passing fast so yeah fixed risk euro 0.5 percent a trade and for the trading frequency now I'm gonna trade two section one is Asia and one is London so for every section I'm gonna trade one trade one execution and that's it if in one session I trade two trade then I close for the day and the next session I'm not going to trade that is the rules okay and yeah I'm still allowing myself to trade all the session Asia, London, New York, whatever as long as I manage my risk and as long as I keep myself as maximum two trades a day that's it so basically I'm still trading in the sea and let's see how we <laughs> how how things go day one all right guys so today my virus for this pair is bullets and i am waiting for an opportunity to to long it's opening and it's pushing to the upside i'm waiting for a retracement because i don't want to trace the price and this is the first day and the first trade of the phase two as well and the thing is after we got some profit after we got some like achievement the next day we show up and we repeat the same things the same plan the same execution the same trading plan it's not that we make some money and then we try to risk more or we lost some money and we try to risk more it's more about consensus and 
the habits, the skill set we build up every single day, and don't let win or losses deviate you from following your plan. So, show up every day and do the same things that make sense to you. All right. So I will see you when we are in the light tree. So you can see the price is trading around here. And like I say, I am waiting for a retracement to long the pair. I don't have an intention to chase the price. So let's be patient and wait for the retracement. So still no retracement. I'm waiting for the 30 minutes candle to close. And from there, I'm gonna wait for an entry. So you can see that I missed the entry. Oh man, this is about to be a really nice tree, but yeah, I missed the entry. So you can see sometimes our buyers our plan work really, really nice, but we don't have an entry. So you can see that I actually did the trade, and if this is a losing trade, then it will be very quick because it's just basically based on momentum. So we can, you can see that we are stopped out. So first trade of the day is a losses. Well, it tricked me to think that it's not going to retrade, and finally it did. I'm going to find a new entry. Second trade, same session. Hold on. So this is the second trade of the day. And this is the last trade of the day as well. And like I, I say, the plan is one trade, one execution. But I use two execution for the trade. So I'm done for the day. I'm not going to trade anymore because to execution that means to trade. Say so no excuse to yeah to 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 trade more. So let's see how this trade unfold. And uh, this is the last trade of the day. Same session to execution. I count it at two trade. So you can see that I stopped out for the second trade and there are no thing, no excuse for my poor execution. So today we are down armored 2R. 1R is 1000 and we are down armored 2R. So we're gonna close for today and come back tomorrow because yeah, this is what it is. A really good plan but poor execution and then we miss a trade and then we try to for more and yeah this is the result so that is the first day ftmo fight 2 day two all right, guys. So welcome to the new day. And today, you can see that basically you can see right here is where I draw my daily resistance level, and here is where I like draw my daily support level. So the last day, bright tree up, wake up here, take out bearish day high, and then now it's closed. So basically now, from what I'm seeing. Today is a bearish day because it failed to close above this resistance level. So today it's going to go down. Very basic. 
and on, on uh, one hour you can see that price is trading below this one hour resistance level as well from this i'm going to anticipate the next one hour candle or the next two hours as beers and what does that mean that means i'm going to seek for a short entry and only short entry if i want a high probability trading so that is the plan for today i see you when we have a light trade and yeah i'm trading basically with lies support resistance and maybe it's very simple and but i believe that we we are actually the holy grail if we manage ourselves well then eventually we will be profitable even with an average trading system as long as your trading strategy have a little edge you should be fine so i see you in the live trading all right guys so now we are in the trade risking one percent so this i'm going to make this the only execution for today and i know that my buyers my plan is bearish but from what i'm seeing the way right open gap up and then it trade through the resistance level on one hour i just told you and it trade down to the opening gap and it trade up so what does that mean does that mean i have a trading buyer that i'm going to seek for a short entry unfortunately price open and showing me that it, ha it have a tendency to go up so be between my buyers and between what i see in the price i'm gonna do one direction and i chose to trade based on what i see which is right now is a long entry and what does that mean does that mean i'm gonna check it and if i lose I close for the session and I come back in London. That's what it is. Because imagine if I long and I lose and I come back and I short and then I lose and I come back and then I long and then I lose and then <laughs> so you see sometimes you make a choice and you stick to it until it's done and you get out. So let's see how it's done for. So, glow for the section. Um, one lesson I want to say to myself is when price have a tendency to expand really, really, I mean, I mean really fast. You can see the candle side, it is huge. What does that mean? When it extended, rises, you have a two option. One, you should check partial. If that's what you like. The second one, just collapse the trade when you see some kind of weakness. Because if you don't do anything, there are two things may happen. It may go further and hit your take profit. But it also can go back to your entry very, 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 very quick. So what do you want? <laughs> and so basically you need to make the decision when the time comes and you know exactly what are you seeking for and i am seeking for a really powerful impulsive move like this one and when it show me and when it's slow now the market is giving me its hand do you want more or you want to check what is your and you get out so that's what i mean by knowing what is belong to your strategy because sometimes 
we are greedy. Sometimes we want more. Sometimes we hold two R and we see another NFC trader are uh, doing like ten R and we want to be like that. No, I'm good. So I see you on the London section. So far today we are up around two R. Second trade London session. All right, guys. So now is London session, and I am on ready in a trade. Um, not really London session, but pre London. And after seeing the chart and doing top down analysis, I decided to enter the trade. So my buyers for this pair for this particular session of the day is bullish and I'm seeking for a breakout mode to the upside. So this is basically a, a trade based on trend line right here and a breakout. I know that sometimes you think that it's very simple approach but we have a, a different view, we have a different way to see market and I believe that the best thing is find some things that resonate and make you understand market movement line yeah you need to understand something and trend line support resistant NMC whatever you use is like a language for yourself to study the market and whatever the language you chose as long as it bring you good result. Stick to it. So, a losses. So you can see, the first trade we win two R, and now we lost one R. So we up one R for the day, and I'm gonna stop trading. So I see you on the next day. So I want you to have a look at the dashboard for the transparency bubbles and. Here is a verification phase, and we're gonna go to the magic. On the verification phase, we usually got 60 days, and my first day red, the second day a uh, one hour. So I'm still uh, losing, but I have uh, no intention to rush or to force the process. Many of us, we not like I used to think that I really want to pass as fast as possible. But the moment you lose your life at the account, is it's not fun and it's really like it will burn you out, and you don't want that to happen to your trading. That's really why this time. In the second phase, we got double amount of the trading trading time limit. Our profit target is smaller, so that's the reason why this time I cut my risk to zero point five percent, and I'm gonna take things slow, two trades a day, and that's it. Let's see if we can make it. So I see you on the next day. Day three. All right, guys. So. Today is a new day, A0 session. We are trading high K50, line market condition. And my buyer today for this pair is Virus. So yesterday we have a, a bullish move, very strong. I think yesterday if I hold this trade, I have around 10R. It's crazy. Anyway, 
price trade into a, res a resistance level and then it have some kind of rejection and it try to push up again and fail so for current session I am more to the bearish buyers and I am awaiting to see if we can get an entry so I see you on the right trade so you can see right now we are in the trade I will keep you updated so right now we are in the trade and you can see that um, actually I have a sell open here and I call for a very small loss the reason for this trade is basically I have a like a test with my trade copier but somehow yes yeah, still one account the trade got closed but that account somehow yeah the trade just not closing and, and I could not find the reason why that's the reason why it took me quite some time to actually make the trade copier work and yeah now we are in the trade so right now I have some kind of trade copier problem some trade doesn't copy I have an open more trade so basically you're seeing yeah very annoying situation I may not like give you a real time update because I have food to work on my trade copier so I'm gonna pause the video a little bit to walk around because I have to manual close the trades on many many accounts so it's kind of annoying so let's see how the trade unfolds eventually so this trade is really really beautiful trade but one of my account doesn't copy the trade at all so that is fucked up but when the thing like that happen we need to focus you can be pissed off but later now we when you are in the trade you need to focus you need to like have everything close have a trade cover stop and then you can be pissed but right now when you are in the trade you need to be focused right So you can see that I should close the trade. We are, let's see, we are up around more than one hour. But to be honest, it is really frustrating because one of my account, I only got like yeah half of the trades open, so I got half of the profit. And the trade copier doesn't really show me any reason. I think they have some kind. Of errors on their saver so so to be honest I don't know what the hell just happened but my trade copier it just didn't work and I, I have to manually close all the orders and that is annoying so I think that is a thing about reality right so sometimes you think that you are ready you just link all your account to trade copier and you think that it's just easy but any new thing that come to your trading that is a new variable that is a new things in your equation and that that can actually mess your performance up if you don't know how to use it we think that basically we just block all the account and just play the trade and everything's done but sometimes saver errors sometimes we set the setting is incorrect sometimes the context side is incorrect and so we close the section here you can see i shot here i call the trade here now try to trade to my entry so look like a really really good trade management today so i see you on the second trade london session 
Alright guys, so now we are in the second trade, London session. And now we are in pretty London, but because market is showing me that it actually have a potential to go down. So that is a breakout trade. And the entry is quite not really a good entry to be honest. Because it's the market order and if we have a slide a boom back to the upside then I will be out of the marketplace which is yeah so this trade is basically a breakout trade because we I see the the momentum after its trade through this one hours support level and it show me that it's really gonna push to the downside and that is line market condition sorry for the replay button here so let's see if we can actually try the price to the downside the kind of trade I need to be very careful with it because breakout trade usually if we are in profit it will move very quick but if things go wrong, it's gonna go wrong very quick as well. So that's what I need to repair myself mentally so that when pride reverts to my face, I gonna accept it and not letting the outcome get into my head. So trade close, a really choppy day and I give the trade so many like so so many times for it to actually break out but it couldn't. So let's sum up for today we are up around 1.5 R, oh, sorry around 1.3 R. So here you can see that at first let, let me uh, show you. So you can see that at first my loss side is a little bit bigger, but then I realize that my stop loss is quite uh, small. That's really why I reduce the loss side and modify the sizing on the account. That's really why you see this sell order close right here, and I will open another one right here, and I just close right here. So. So basically the trade is a break even trade. And I think I just gonna close the day. Sometimes we're gonna accept that things doesn't go the way we want. And yeah, just close the day and come back tomorrow. It is 40 minutes, no, 50 minutes of trading in London. So I see you tomorrow. Day four. Hello YouTube. So now is a new day. A0 session. The pair, the symbol is Heike Fitti. Today my buyers is Bullet. So basically now we have a price close above this key level and it on its way. It looks like it's gonna go to the next one. So now I'm going to find an opportunity to long this buyers. So I will let you know once I am in the tray. <clears throat> Alright guys, so I'm in the tray. So market open, trade up a little bit and I wait for a retracement and my buyers, like I say, is bullet. So I in the long entry, risking 1%. Uh, sorry, not 1%, 1R, one which is 1000. So let's see uh, how things go, so, shall we? 
so far everything is nice I got the entry that I patiently wait for and I really like the execution so I'm happy with my plan I'm happy with my execution trade copier works smoothly so everything is winning plan that's what matter we plan we execute we manage our trade and we manage ourselves well that's what matter to me right now not really the trade itself but more likely the process that getting earth into the trade and getting earth out of the trade so let's see if the trade can be a winning trade or a losing trade So you can see I lost. Let's see how much we lose. We lose one R. So to be honest, when price consolidating around here, I have an intention to close it manually and cause it was small. But the thing is, during a trade, there will be a lot of moments like, should we close it? Should we take our profits? Should we cut our loss? Sometimes I have a enough confidence to to do things manually, but when I am not, or when I don't trust myself enough, that's when stop loss come in and just work thing out as our plan. Because yeah, sometimes. We see markets very clearly, but sometimes it's just emotionally in. We're gonna accept it. So I see you on this the next section. The first trade of the day, a lot of Second trade, London session. Hello YouTube. So right now is London session, and today is Friday, and probably. This is gonna be the last trade of the week. So my buyer today for UK 100 is bullet, and I am looking for a long entry. So yesterday we can see that it actually have a really nice run to the upside, break out of this resistance, and overall we can see that it doesn't show much of weakness. That's the reason why I'm waiting to see some kind of boom bang before I enter my long entry and try the price up here to the next key level so I will see you when I have a live trade running all right all right guys so now we are in the trade prior retracing to a level where I think it's gonna bounce to the upside so let's see how the trade unfold I'm gonna make it like the last trade of the week as well. So one trade, one execution, and close the day. I deeply believe that right now, if I can follow a strict routine and manage myself really well, every day show up, take my setup, and done for the day then it eventually things will work out in my favor so let's see how the trade unfold shall we all right guys so there's something i want to tell you which is i just have a re-entry which is try touch my stop what but I actually actually lost one R in this session 
you can see that I lost one hour in, in this section, but eventually I re entry because I see that it has potential to rebounce at that level. I just saw something that I missed, calculate. But the thing is, I broke the rule. So, this is third trade of the day. So, probably after this trade, I'm gonna close for the day for sure. Then, nothing like whenever I break the rule, that it just, it doesn't matter what the XQ is, it's just breaking the rules and I don't like it, to be honest. So, this trade. Definitely, it doesn't matter how it turned out. Winning, losing, doesn't matter. I'm gonna close for today for sure. That is what I'm gonna promise to myself. Because usually, when the trade go and get stopped out, that means something wrong. And when we read entry to that trade again, most of the time is was uh, an emotional decision. Sometimes we can even try to go with a bigger loss sign, but, but right now I'm still risking 1% per trade. So, oh uh, sorry, 1R per trade. This is actually 0.5% for this account. So, yeah, whatever the result. I got a call for today. This is the, the last trade of today, and today we broke the rule. So you can see that I actually close everything. I don't like the way it's consolidating and just keep pushing around. So obviously that my 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 trading idea was were invalidated and so let me tell you what happened today. Um here we are down to R. Here is the first tray and here is the second tray. So the first trade we got stopped out and then probably have some rejection and from my experiences trading this pair I believe that it's gonna have a like a wick to the downside and it's gonna reject and come to and push to the upside really really fast but then eventually I got probably consolidating around bore me and make me like tired of waiting so I really want to see something very strong something very energetic but it give me this it give me <laughs> so I got out so that is done for the week and you can see that we are down yeah I see I'm gonna see you on the next floor So right now you can see that this is the desk floor and well it has been four days yeah four trading days and you can see that the first day we I lost over two R and then the next two days I secure only two R and the next day which is today lost two R. So, and today I, I I broke the rule. I got the third trade. I managed to close it, and uh, I think break even. But still, not really a good behavior. But that is the thing. Sometimes you could have got out of 
your rules. But even when you broke the rule, remember to follow your your rules. It's like the rule is the first trading frequency to trade today. It is the first layer, and the second layer is the risk management. So if you manage your risk, even you broke the rule, sometimes you still find a way to survive. That's one of the most important thing. So right, right now, if you're looking at this, my win rate is only 38%, and the profit factor is, is now lower than one. So you can see I'm a little struggling. Yeah, not really a good performances. So you can see that this is where people are gonna see and people are gonna say like your strategy sucks, your trick sucks. But then when you win, people are gonna say like share your strategy, what is your strategy, please this may have to trade. <laughs> I basically just you trend line and I try to manage myself and I try to be more patient than the majority of other trader yeah because I'm not really smart at them so that is all that I can do patient and manage myself so I'm gonna see you on next week that's done for the week and today is a losing week day five all right guys so now today is a zero session and I'm trading Australia 200s and my bias for this pair is bullets and it basically is trading based on a trend line so on a one hour perspective we have a price trade near the trend line and it's consolidating around this key level right here so I'm going to look for a long entry so we have this one hour candle open trade down so because my buyers is bullish so when price trade down rises I got a long so we are gonna go to the line trade uh, so here in my FTML account you can see that I open around five trade but they are actually the same one are risking one thousand so my stop loss is around nine pips and my take profit is around 40 pips so let's see how the trade unfolds this is the first trade of the week and yeah today is monday easy session So I decided to call the trade as almost one R. So let me uh, tell you about this trade. Um, so this is yeah. So this is the first trade, and this is so basically you can see that I wrong around here, but I rally up around this region. And then I decided to add to winning position and it's only around 20% of my sizing. So basically my risk is still 1R and even all the trade got stopped out 
I will never let myself lose more than one hour. Sometimes sleep pay kind of stuff, but my plan is even when I decided to add to winning position, the reason I want to add is we are in the very beginning of a bullish movement to the upside. That's the reason why I adding around here. With the same situation, if I adding around here, around here, then it's gonna be very very easy to get stopped out, and it's very easy for you to fail the trade as well because it's the wrong way to to uh, like pyramid your trade on the top of a swing. So anyways, that's I don't recommend any want to actually add to a winning position because it's quite advanced up and if you don't believe enough in your edge if you don't believe enough in your training strategy you certainly should not do that so anyway you can see i right here is times up and probably we should call other trade because you can see it right now, right, just consolidating around and the range of the pair is just so small and there ain't no volume left. So uh, is there no meaning to actually holding? That's when why I decided to just call the trade and come back later in London. This is one of the first time I trade this pair after doing back testing and try to understand it. So it looked like it's not really good timing, but is it absolutely a beautiful trade with beautiful execution and everything go as planned? It's just we don't have a good risk reward. But anyway, a win is a win. So I see you on the next trade. Five minutes later. So I want you to see that around. Three minutes after I closed the trade, it went to my armor's like armor three R, <laughs> and I hold the trade for yeah for around two hours. But the second I close the trade, is move very very aggressive. Now here's the thing: you need to trust your plan even the kind of things happen because it happened and it make you think that the next time you're gonna hold to your target if that is your plan then that's fine but usually they're not usually we the kind of experiences they distract us from our plan so the next time when when the market is, is consolidating you started to think that it's gonna be happen like this one, so we're not we're not going to close. But that but the next time you do that, it's gonna go to your stop up. That is the thing about trading. So whatever you do, and as long as you trust yourself, as long as you plan your trade and you get out when you didn't get what you seek, then that's fine. There will be your time. There will be the time when you got to take profit. This time it's it just not belonging to us and we need to accept that. So I see you on the next trade. Second trade, London session. All right guys, so welcome to the London section. Now I am in uh, the trade right now, you can see right here. And still the same, I'm risking 1R, which is 1000. And you can see for Inesi, FTMO actually have the best spreads compared to other broad firm. My first fund is quite high. The funded trader, I think the spread for indices are the worst. 
So it depends on your trading strategy and it depends on what kind of instrument that you are trading. You can pick the prop firm or broker that fit your trading style. And I think it will help a lot. Third trade, same session. So I I lost the trade. I lost one hour and yeah, I re entries again. I re entry because I uh, I believe this one maybe Yeah to be honest the first execution is the first execution where it was not really good, but then no execution for the re entry because now it's the, the third trade which is breaking out the rules again. The only thing that makes me feel better during this situation is that I, I got a little profit this, this morning in a zero session. But still, breaking the rule doesn't feel good. Especially you're showing it to the world. And this trade is still 1R. I'm not increasing risk. I'm not increasing loss sign. It is still 1R and I, I have no intention to break my risk management. So uh, let's see how the trade go. I'm going to focus to manage this trade because right now even right now I feel a little impulsive because the kind of behavior it doesn't make me feel like I am myself and I don't want you, you to see this I don't want I think no trader want to let others see they are breaking the rules because it's supposed to be disciplined, it's supposed to be easy. <laughs> but without the rule, we are not going very far. And yeah, I'm gonna focus on the trade first. Let's, let's see how it turned out. So, uh, overall, let's see. Today we are down, small loss. All right. So I uh, call the trade at a uh, break even because it didn't show me that it have a potential to yeah to go up. So I uh, so today we have a uh, three trades and we are down with a small loss. So first day of the week close at losses. The thing about FTMO is that even it is just a small loss, but for other account in, for example, in the, my forex fund, I actually, I, I actually lost more. So spread on indice is really something. Now let's get back to the rules. 
So I proxy the rules again and trade more than two trades a day. And it's really difficult during the kind of situation because I don't want you to see trading like this. This is actually reality. This is actually where we usually messing up. Because consider now if I continue trading, I'm gonna be impulsive and I'm gonna be destroying my accounts. And during the time I every time I make mistake, every time I broke the rule, I always ask myself like, should I publish this video? Because the fir first thing first is I don't want you to follow my mistake. And because, for example, if I break the rule and this trade turned out to be a huge winner, somebody may think that it's okay to do so. But it's really not. And the second thing is if I publish with this kind of information usually people are gonna, gonna be pissed <laughs> but yeah so now i'm gonna do the best thing in the kind of situation which is close the day and walk away even i said so i couldn't fourth trade opened same session So you can see that I I lost more than expected. So it's not only two trades, but it's actually uh, four trades. So the first trade I got stop out right here, and then the next trade I got out at break even, and I should have a stop. But then I try to re-enter again right here. And I got totally crosses. So to be honest, it's really difficult to keep going. Especially, I mean about the recording. It doesn't matter. This is really very important. Every single time when I when I broke the rule, it doesn't matter. If I win or I lose, I always feel bad. And it feel like the mental cap the mental capital is is really down and I also feel like I did something wrong and I feel not very good with myself, not very good with my trading performances and so this one not the the day where I need to stop and do reflection and hopefully I can get my shit together and come back later so I see you on the next day So the first thing I want to say is I just work out now is still the same day that I lost and the same day I broke the rule. Well, the feeling is I got better and I feel a lot better after working out. But still, the energy is not enough for me to set up a nice camera with high quality image and microphones kind of thing like this one so I'm sorry for the low quality video I should want to capture what I feel right now and I hope that you're gonna find it useful so this kind of moment is why I don't want to sell anything it's just really really hard for me to actually 
sit in front of others and teach them how to trade or how to make money trading because in, in trading it doesn't matter how good your technical analysis is it doesn't matter how you think you got it if eventually there will be moments that you will never repair for there are things that until you been through it is almost impossible to this i i can tell you what may happen in the situation i can tell you like how to repair yourself but eventually when you go to the battle yourself eventually you will get hurt and that's when you need to step up and trust yourself because no one else is going to be there i am not going to be there they're only you that is, mo that is the reason why trading is very very lonely even you are in a trading room or you have a friends that trading when you fail or when you are over trade or when you blow out your account when you hurt yourself so much that you the, the kind of moment is gonna be very vulnerable and you cannot tell anyone that is the moment where everyone is gonna laugh at you everyone is gonna judge you for your mistake no one actually understand you anyone can give up on you but at that very moment you need to give your help give yourself a hand and pick yourself up that's no one can teach you they can tell you to repair yourself but you need to beat yourself up like what i'm doing right now i'm picking myself up so that when you see this you understand that it's difficult one other thing that i never really tell anyone is as the mentors the people that i actually learned trading from 10 years ago they are nowhere to be seen now most of them i think all of them disappear we can think in a positive way that maybe they are now rich and they get what they want so they just chase their dream and enjoy life somewhere but what it is not right and that's the reason why i i don't want to be your mentor the best thing i can be is a reflection somewhere around the world some of you may see me and knowing that someone out there is doing the same thing as you are and they overcame it they endure it and you you realize that you are not alone because in in, in today's world everything is shining everything is just look easy no one actually showing you it's a hard moment but the entire moment is, is why trading is super super difficult but if you can master it you are a true warrior and nothing can stop you so i see you on the next trading day stay strong day six all right guys so now we are in uh, the trade a zero session so uh the thing is i yeah i have a, a short entry on australia 200 and due to the SM card limitation in other account, it I had to open by uh, yeah I think ten trade with very small loss sign. It makes the trade I think a little bit more than one hour. I think it's around one point two or one point three or I think, but yeah I think that's fine. So basically we. 
we have a market open for Aussie and price rally up and I'm basically trading based on channel and trend line so my target is around one two three let's see if we can actually get it for this trade <clears throat> my <clears throat> my plan is holding it for around let's see around 30 minutes I'm gonna hold this trade for 30 minutes does it mean if it doesn't give me the signal that is going to go down in 30 minutes I'm gonna close the trade and that is the first trade of the day let's see how it unfolds So that is the first trade of the day. It's around you can see right here exactly 30 minutes. And that is what I mean by knowing what you seek for, have the time and let the trade play out. And if it didn't then get out. Then so um let's see how much we are up. So we are to be here here so we are up to around 2.5 r i think when i click uh, glow is it actually like straight up a little bit that's the reason why it's supposed to be 3 r <laughs> that is the thing about this pair it's really the rand is really tight and you can see every tick is like Every move, every tick really affects the profit. But anyway, a win is a win. So that is really a nice win after the Y. And to be to be honest, when I eat this trade, I feel very like anxious. Like that is the thing about losing streak and turn down. It makes you feel like it makes your net trade feel like it's not going to work out and that's really why we need time up because the more we lose the more the more momentum is going to build up and it makes we feel like yeah we, we, we could not do it so that is the first trade of the day and for the second trade I'm thinking that I may check the second trade for this pair as well because besides this short entry i have a plan for a long entry you can see right here i'm waiting for price to trade down there for the next like 15 minutes i may find an entry to actually long this pair so that's it for today i will see you on the second trade second trade same session okay guys so i'm gonna check the second trade on the same pair australia 200 and this trade based on the channel itself when price trade into the trend line right here the bottom line of the channel i consider it's like oversold and i'm gonna look for lower time framing for confirmation and actually gonna execute so i'm gonna see you when we have the live trade running all right guys so now we are in the live trade and uh you can see it for this trade is already allowed I only open five trades, and the loss size a lot smaller because the stop lot is larger, so the loss size is gonna be smaller. So let's see how the trade unfold. Well, my risk reward for this trade is like one to five, one to six, <laughs> but uh, I think. One to five, one to six. It's like you get the kind of trade like 
once is every month is not really easy so i will be very happy if it can go for one two three yeah so let's see how the trade unfold for this trade i can hold from two hours and after two hours i gonna re, re, re evaluate to see how it go and then from there i may add to winning position or i just call out all the trade and call it a day so yeah so basically that is it for today i think it's really nice when you have a two trade in the same session and everything is as planned because you then i'm gonna have a, a whole day for recovery after yesterday when i make mistake and over trade and it's really burning out especially on other account you have no idea trading in the c trading cfd mtmo actually really really good on other forum it's a moment when you open the trade on in the c you got commission you got spread and it just really kill you if you are a scalper like i am right now so let's see how this trade info So this trade called Well that is a really nice So as you can see I I I told you we have a two hours for this trade. Eventually I hope for around let's see from here to here I think Yeah around two and a half hours and now we are close. And I think that we can actually go higher from here to around 5R. But no, I'm good. So the first trade we call for 215R. And the second trade now we are as around 3.5R. So we close the day for 6R. Oh. <laughs> That's quite surprising. So I'm gonna close the day and I'm gonna stop trading for today. I want to tell you that when you are in a losing streak and you got a lot of losses, you need time to observe and study this loss. But when you win 6R, you need time to observe the win as well. So don't underestimate the wins because when you win you have a tendency to do stupid things as much as when you are losing they are just different state winning and losing 
but they have the same effects that can actually trigger your impulsive behavior. When you lose, you want to prevent trade. When you win, you want to overtrade. So I'm gonna see you tomorrow. I'm gonna play a game watching Netflix doing stupid thing. Yeah, just not trading. <laughs> Day seven. All right, guys. So now we are in the tree, and yeah, at the moment I am in the tree, right? Boom. Probably gonna get stop out. Not really a good way to start day, isn't it? So I think this is the quickest tree. <laughs> Yeah, I stop out like in one minute or two minutes, and uh, I'm down one hour for today. <sighs> Shit, <laughs> this really, I mean, really, really fast. See right here, down one hour. So that is the foot trade of today. <laughs> oh man. Second trade, same session. All right, guys. So right now is the second trade of the day, same session, easier session, same pair, and this is the final trade of the day as well. And I'm still using the same buyer, which is beers. And let's see how the trade unfold. The reason that I still remain beers because if we see on Daily perspective, we're gonna see that yesterday price trade high, take out previous day high, and then I think yesterday we have some kind of really huge high impact news, and around 10, 10 a.m. New York time, price trade rapidly down on almost every single indice. Go. So basically, when I see this kind of dip, dip, uh, dip placement, I think this is where most people are going to buy. But I think it's going to con continue because when I look at this swing, I am expecting it to actually go even deeper. <laughs> Moreover, we have a kind of a key level around here. So the so way price pulling back up right here for me is just a uh, retesting so let's wait to see how the tree unfold yeah same buyers same risk one r
Well, done for the day. It's about to be a really short tree, but I hold it for four hours. And I'm going to tell you what's really happening throughout this tree. I think it's a fascinating case study. First, firstly, let's see how much we are up today. So the first trade, we are down for one R. But for the second trade, we are, I think we are up for two R. So we close the day for um, one R. Yeah. So let's talk about this trade. So you can see that at first, I enter the trade around here and price trade down here. And I think normally I would just get out here and take around 3R and I think it's beautiful. But when I go there, price started to moving up and I missed my opportunity to get out. So I tried to hold longer for a little bit. If price trade down again, I'm gonna close the trade. Unfortunately, it's trade all the way up here. So during the circumstance, you can see that I marked down a little bit of scaling, which is when I add to winning position. Right here is the first position when I add, it's around 20% of the sizing. And so when price trade up here, the thing is when bright when when I miss the opportunity to get out now I have a like two option. Either I'm gonna just ho and ho, which is not really the best idea. Or we can just get out of the trade and come back later tomorrow. Or if I still have the same buyers, I still believe that this trade is gonna work out. Well, that means for every up move, I'm going to find an opportunity to capitalize on the up move. Because my first entry is really, really beautiful right at the top. And this trade is still a winning trade. So now, either I manage to get out or I'm going to capitalize on this retracement. And that's what I did. So the first scale in. The second scale in is right here, 20% 20 20 of the sizing. And it's still not really a good scale in right here, right? So, and then price trade up and then straight down here. Right here, I, I don't want to scale anymore because I was a little afraid. And I, I think this, the second sizing, it should be around here, which is really a better scenario. So when price trade down around the reason, the reason why I started to scale in the third right here and the four right here, because fun, it's not only about technical, but fundamentally due to some kind of high impact news yesterday, all the indices are bearish and they are going down all day long for, I think for 12 hours just straight down and right now the pressure the sentiment is still very very bearish and I was watching US 30 and I see a co correlation with this bear right here so when I compare that co correlation with the pattern that we are in right now what I am expecting is a move to the downside and then I'm going to close all the trade that I scaled in. Uh, unfortunately, even US 30 is go down as my plan, which is really good. But this one, this is supposed to be going down, break down by US 30. Unfortunately, it's just a small movement to the downside. That's really why when I see this trade up, it started to see like an accumulation and that's it i don't want to stay there so i close the trade for two r so you can see right here as stop off to to first entry what does that mean that mean 
it doesn't matter how I manage to scale in and to winning position, whatever you call it, pyramid, whatever you call it, I always keep my risk the same as one R. That means when my stop loss get hit for all the trade, then I'm gonna lose one R or less than one R. In any circumstance, I don't want my risk, my exposure to be more than one R. Even that is yeah, really a good trade or some, some something because when the risk is, is huge, I usually messing up. That's the reason why the trade that I scale in is very small in lot sign and they are not really affecting the the risk much. Yeah. So that is something about how I manage the trade. And the best scenario is yeah, I still get out of right here, which is I I miss it. And it took me like another three hours and I'm really stressful. So I'm out at two R. If price go down there, we are possibly have a, up to like, you know, like uh, four, four R, five, five R, really, really nice. But well, sometimes things doesn't always go the way we want it. But as long as we manage risk, we always have the chance for another day. And I am not recommending anyone to add to winning position because to be honest, I'm still practicing and you can see that it's not always that I get the best entry, but I but the thing is I manage risk. That is a key thing. That is that is one of the most important things when you practice or when you try any new thing to your trading. So I see you tomorrow. Today we, we are up one R to trade. Date. All right, guys. So my buy today for this bear is bearish, and I'm looking for a retracement to the upside, and then shot. Yesterday, I I didn't break any rule, but but to be honest, I over trade a little bit on another account of mine, and it's. <laughs> It burned me out, made me a little bit disappointed in myself for for breaking the rule over trading. But now it's a new day, and we need to be focused and getting our shit together. That is the thing about my journey. I make mistake. I induced the chart down, the losing trades, and at the end of the day, I have to suck it up and trust myself, trust the plan. Because if I lose focus, it's very easy for me to actually fail into the impulsive trading behavior, and eventually I will pull out my account. So. I will see you when we have the live stream. Alright guys, so we are in the tray. But again, price just gap down. Uh, sorry, price just gap up and uh, yeah, really close to my uh, stop loss. So, the first trade is a losses. And then, uh, let's see. Yeah. I'm uh, down one hour. Second trade, same session. All right, guys. So, so as you saw, I was stop out one hour, and I just re entry this trade after I monitoring the trade and. Unfortunately, yeah, our stop out were touches and then price run into our favor. That's really why 
uh, in re-entry so basically the reason is the same for this tree and this re-entry makes it to two trades a day so after this trade I will stop trading for the whole day that is the cost of doing re-entry because the kind of behavior is dangerous because I believe that it's gonna go down that's really why I still try to catch this move but in case it's not then I gotta accept that my buyers my trading plan is wrong and I'm gonna stop for the day the thing is I can actually trade London or New York but two trades a day two loss a day is is kind of heavy and if I try to trade more in London or New York usually if I lose I'm not going to be able to take it and I will lose myself and then I will over trading I will revenge trade I will over risk and I will blow out my account that is usually what happens when you trade a lot so take that from my experiences today I'm gonna trade two trades a day every single day at my plan try to keep things balanced at possible so let's see how the trend fall Stop out. So uh, that is two trade of the day, and unfortunately, I lost. Yeah, yeah, it's quite sad. But I see you tomorrow. I need to get my my shit together. I'm a little bit yeah tired today. Day nine. All right, guys. So now is Asia session, Australia two hundred. And today, to be honest, I was very biased about this bear to go down. So I actually have an intention to actually shot around here. Unfortunately, my forest fund and other platform, actioners, whatever, they actually open around here, and I can actually shot, but. FTMO, I have to wait until around 10 minutes later before I can actually open order. That's the reason why I miss it move to the outside. So I uh, place the trade anyway. But because I go into the trade very late for FTMO, that's the reason why I do a very large stop lot. But the target is still around more than 1 to 2. And here is the plan. If I have a tendency to go up, I'm gonna capitalize on this on this opportunity, and my plan is gonna adding into this position. If market give me the opportunity, then I'm gonna add to another position because we have a two trades. Remember, so that is a plan. In case I doesn't give me the opportunity, then I will just let the market run I will take this one for one to one one to two whatever because today's a sentiment I believe it's very very dearest for almost every indice so that's really why I take the move even if it's broke out and not really resisting or anything and remember when you chase the move you want to pro protect yourself well that's really why you are very lost a lot 
this is a very huge stop loss for me. And here's the plan for today. Um, let's go to the light tree first. All right, guys. So here is a light tree, and here's the thing. Today is non fam payroll Friday. Yeah. So usually I have a two trades at my plan, but because now it is Friday, and non fam payroll usually have some kind of a really good opportunity if you are patient and if you trade after the news. You never trade before non fam payroll. It's it like a lot of people are gonna trade like twice an order, five minutes or ten minutes, or even like one or two minutes before the news release. And then basically gambling because you have no idea how market can react. Gap down, gap up, and ignore your stop loss. So the plan today is I possibly allow myself to trade the third trade if if I see an opportunity in non fan payroll I usually don't trade the third trade but today I am blending from the very beginning of the day from the very very, very first trade of the day I'm blending that I may or may not have the third trade because non fan payroll usually have a really really nice move and I only allow myself one trade, same risk. And I'm gonna manage myself during the news trading because non fan payroll is not a shock. And if you like play with it and if you allow yourself to like re entry, sizing bigger, or trade before the news, yeah, a lot of stuff can go wrong during non fan payroll day. So that is the plan for today. So if this trade retrace, I'm gonna add another trade. Yeah, two trade at the same time. That's very, very unusual for me. But because today, for this pair, I have a really, really huge bias for this one. It's gonna go down. All right. That's really why for every move to the upside, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna shot it. <laughs> and this is my first trade. So I only have a, another trade to capitalize on this pair, and that's done. And I have another trade for news trading, and that's it. So I will uh, let you know if I have any update on this trade. In the meantime, let's see how it unfolds. Alright guys, so I just entered the second trade. The second the second trade is right here. So that is at the beginning I told you that if price go up here, I gonna enter the second trade. Because I believe that today the buyer is very strong and very bearish. So I'm gonna capitalize on every single upload as long as I stay in boundaries of two trades a day. Okay? So but seeing my first entry, it just go down and down. So the first plan cancel. So right now you can see I mark up some green line. Green line right here is my. You can see the previous low that had been taken, and you can see price how price actually have a problem to actually getting above the line. So when I see the kind of price action, I enter the second trade with the stop lot it's just around here. The first trade, the original stop lot is still here. Alright. Now 
even all the trade get close, my current total risk is 2R, which is 2000, right? So in any circumstance, if all of my stop loss get hit, I still lose only 2R. Now you need to listen because when we trade more than one trade in one opportunity, and this is very unusual for me because I believe this opportunity is high probability. That's the reason why I'm trying to capitalize on this. And if I lose, I need to accept that I was wrong. All right. I'm not going to enter the third entry. I'm not going to enter the, the fourth entry. And I always keep my risk management to protect me if things go wrong. Because the problem of trading 2R in one trade, one opportunity, at the same time is that you have a big order. And when you have a big order, every pip equal bigger profit. And when you have a bigger profit, just for lotting around, it can fuck your mind up. All right, so let's go to the light trade. All right, so now is a light trade. I don't want to you to get freaked out. All right, I think that is basically seventeen trades, but that's actually just two trade because the way I am manage the trade using trade copier, magic key. I open multiple positions. That's the reason why it look a little a little. Messy, 17 trades. But as I say, in any circumstance, stop lock to R, all right? Even less. So that is two trades of the day. So the only way I can trade the third trade is in non fan payroll. When I see some opportunities that I can actually capitalize on. Otherwise, like I say, we plan for the third trade and we may or may I may not take the trade, but I have a debt in my hand. And I plan for that trade for tonight. Then fan pay off. So that's done for two trades, one opportunity, two execution. Let's see how the trend fall. And again, this is just two R. Alright? You can see right here the first trade again, and this is the second trade. So I'm closing all the three. You can see it take a while because there are a lot of orders. So uh, let's see how much we are up. I think 
around a little bit more than a GR. So that is quite uh, a tree. So that is actually two trays. And uh, to be honest, I, I want to see the tray lower. But that is the thing about holding a tray, especially the tray when you scale in or two tray with same buyers and open the same like the same session. The longer we hold and the more we are in profits, we actually have a tendency to actually it's like it's gonna be very very hard to let go sometime. Like I want to hold more, I want to reach the final targets down here. Yes, yeah, sometimes it's go there, but most of the time we need to accept that when things go wrong and when price show or the characteristic that the higher ability that is not going to go down anymore, then I'm gonna take the profits and call it a day. So, so before we 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 end this section. Session. I, I want to remind you again that the kind of trade management is more complex and it's more like complicated depend on the trader. And I am not recommending anyone to follow what I'm doing right here because even though I, you can see there are a lot of orders, but there are actually two trades. And I, my intention is. Just even they are running, I manage my risk. Let's say if the second trade got stopped out and I close the first trade at break even, then I lost only one R. All right, so I have a hard stop. I have a hard stop loss and I have a, my mental stop loss as well. Because when you don't have a stop loss and you only have a mental stop loss, when you lose yourself, then no one can help you. But when you have a bow, the hard stop lock and the mental stop lock, then you're gonna manage the trade a lot better, like what I'm doing right here. So hopefully that yeah, this is really a long trade I hold it for let's say eight hours. Yeah. So again we probably can trade in non fan payroll for the third trade as our plan at the beginning of the day or we may not i will uh, yeah i will uh, keep you updated i need to monitor the market and absolutely i'm not going to trade before the news so see you on the next trade so we are up 3r third trade new york session all right guys so right now is pre-New York and we are not really at the news yet but I want to say something about my word for dollar index dollar index is where I'm gonna focus on non fan payroll trading because from what I see on quickly perspective and daily perspective I'm seeing the price trading above the key level on daily perspective and on quickly I can see it is trading and respecting the trend like so for me right now for any ma manipulation to the downside of dollar index I'm gonna find an opportunity to trade this dollar index to the upside and now if we looking at arrow again British pound well, from what I'm seeing right now, my perspective for this pair is Eddie Beers. And when Eddie Beers is like that, I consider that it's going to trade around this reason. That is a direction. And this direction telling me that arrow is weaker what does that mean we have an arrow weaker we have a strong dollar index from this 
I'm gonna trade Euro against American dollar. Beers. Alright. So right now we we have this current situation on uh, Euro against American dollar. And now the new is not really yet. That's the reason why I'm not going to trade. The only way I'm gonna trade this is I need to see some card movement to the upside and then I'm gonna find opportunity to shot it. And I believe that this one is gonna be a very high risk reward ratio trade and very high probability trade as well. So for another barrel, I think it's gonna go down. So for any move to the upside, I'm gonna shot, right? That in my buyer very the plan is very very clear. If we fail, we lost one R. But if we win, we we can actually manage to win a lot. Nintendo. The first minute is going to be very aggressive. It's trading up, like I say. But I'm not going to trade it yet. You can see the spread is still shipping a lot. So now you can see the spread is starting to become normal again. To be honest, I want to see a trade a little bit higher. So you can see that after the new just around a few minutes, everything is normal again. Now this is where you can trade, but you need to make sure that you have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you just execute. You're gonna be stuck out. So this trade open. So for this trade, I'm using around forty pips stop block. I know it's quite huge, right? But I am targeting around more than 100 pips and yeah I don't want to have a like, really tight stop loss because trading the news you really need to know where price likely to go or like how power the move can be so trading news is like you have a, your daily normal range but news like an ejection and there's a lot of volatility and right now I trade as I told you at my plan bearish I'm totally bearish on EU and for me it will probably will trade lower if it's not even if it's go higher right now for me it's just ma manipulation eventually it will go down because that is a plan and if the plan fail I'm out. I lost one R and I still up two R for the day, so I'm good. So everything needs to be clear, especially trading the payroll is one of the hardest. You can see how fast this guy up market move. You can see very, very aggressive. And many people think that they can do it. But when you see like the profits just running really quick like this, it can play with your mind and you can easily lose yourself. So train the new trade after the new always and you got to have a plan. I have a plan and I told you about the moves that I want to catch. I have a very clear bias and I just execute my bias based on my plan. And that's it. If I lose, I let it be. So let's see how the trade unfolds.
Alright, so... Yes. I was wrong. The plan was wrong. And I closed the, the third tray as... 1R. Losing 1R. So, today we are up. 2.5R. So, uh, that's a long day. I'm gonna call it a day and... Uh, so, that is... End of the week. And... I see you next week. So you can see that even though I planned and I really was confident in the trade, in the plan that it's gonna be go it's gonna go down, but eventually you can see sometimes when we are really confident but the price just goes trailing to the upside. And yeah. That's why we always need to repair for the plan in case it's failed and now it's, it, it failed. <laughs> Alright. So today is good day because even I, I trade three trades but everything is at plan and yeah, it feels good. Day 10. Alright guys, so welcome to the new week. Welcome to the new day and here is the new trade of the week. So basically on four hour perspective, I do have a we have the trend line right here showing me that price is kinda of oversold. So on one hour perspective, price opening up here, trade down and well, for me today, this, this pair, my, my buyers, is bullish. And here is a trade that I took on my FTMO account, risking 1R. So let's, because eventually when price opening right here and trade down to this kind of support level, I'm expecting from here it's, go, it's, it's gonna go up. And that is a buyer for the day. Let's go to the light tree. So right here is the light tree. We can see that currently we are under drawdown. Yeah. But I'm not really worried because the plan is clear, the buyer is clear. We just gonna execute and let's see how the trade eventually unfold. Because the last week was very like intense and bearish for almost every single indices. That's the reason why for this week when price open, I am expecting some kind of retracement from this kind of price. So let's see how the trade unfolds. This is the first trade of the week, first trade for execution. So, for trade of the day, for trade of the week, and stop out. <laughs> Not really a good way to, uh, yeah. So, I will let you know when I have a second trade. Maybe same session, maybe a different session. Second trade, same session. And this is the second trade of the day, and probably the last trade of the day as well. So, the thing about re entry is. It's not an, an easy thing to do, especially when our trading frequencies is like continuous and it's very, very possible for me to lose myself after two losing trades within like minutes. That's the reason why even this re-entry failed, I'm going to stop for the day, all right? The reason that I take this trade you can see the first trade is 
with stop loss around 25 pips, but the second trade the stop loss around 16 pips. So the size the sizing is a little bit different, but the buyers remain the same. I still believe that it's gonna go up, and I'm gonna take profits around uh, this area up here based on the trend line. So the first trade basically, yeah, just stop out. I don't want to think too much about what's has been done because it may cause some kind of emotional damage for the next trade. So the next trade for me is the most important thing in this moment and I'm going to focus on the next trade only. So the reason that I took this trade at first, I still have as a buyer that is going to going up. Secondly, when I'm looking at Jiret 30, I'm seeing the correlation between Jiret 30 and the pair that I, I am trading. And from what I see, Jiret 30 is going to have a buy. My buyer for Jiret 30 is for this for this easier session is going up. So that means it's going to have some kind of effects on my pair as well. And that's really why I still check this trade with the same buyers. I'm not I am not sure that it's gonna go in up for the whole day, but for this particular session, since we open it right here and trade really down, I'm not going to fall more and sell at the bottom. So for me the best play right now is buying this and yeah, if I lose then let it be, that's done for the day. So, <laughs> stop out too short the other day, and is yeah, not really a good way to start the week. Really fast and really just like. So I think that the the price when you go against the, tr the short term train, whatever you call it. So first trade, the second trade, and bow I losses. And I gotta stop for the day. <sighs> so I see you tomorrow. Alright guys, so I want you to look in at the this war to have a light like, an idea what's really going on right now with the equity curves, the balance and stuff. So right now, here is how it looked like after 11 days of trading. And to be honest, if I still risking 1% of trade, I should have already passed. But that is the thing about passing and passing quickly because now we have our 60 days and we have a 5% at our target, so that it, that actually makes sense to to risk less. And because if we are consistent and if we truly have an edge, it should I should have no problem of passing. So that's the reason why this time instead of focusing on the result, I'm trying to focusing on the process focusing on the very next trade one good trade at a time one good trade at a time so so you can see currently we are in drawdown again this is the first drawdown really deep from here to here really really deep and then i, I managed to get out of it and then another drawdown out of it another drawdown out of it so this one is yeah another drawdown so so you can see everything is clear now we should need to read the profit target then it should be fine 
here is a daily profit and loss you can see um, nothing really special two trades a day and i managed to keep my loss small and i have a small winning day and i have a big winning day as well but overall only one big win day otherwise it's it is really much break even and yeah win rate is a little bit low so that's i think that's it i will keep you updated and hopefully this week we can have some really nice profits overall anyway let's stay disciplined and let's stay light focusing on the process i see you on the next trading day day 112nd trade, same session. So I close all the trade and today we are down more than 2R and to be honest today is one of the days I have no idea what I'm doing you can see if I let if I still holding the gold trade it looked like a good trade but you can see right here, I sell and then I buy and then I change my virus again and I sell and then I eventually I try I change my virus again to buy. And this is when I started to build a really good position, which is allow me to really hold the trade and you a big risk reward ratio trade. Unfortunately, I close the trade because yeah, some, because something and the last ray I just didn't have her confidence to hold it anymore and I closed this at 1R so to be honest it is one of the day where my bias is very very unclear I I feel pretty tired confused and have no idea what I'm doing Sometime I got to be licensed and this way of the moment that I lost the mode where I just buy, sell, buy, sell and then eventually when I look in at the BNL and I just feel frustration and then I just keep buy, sell, buy, sell. So you see that one of the reason that it's very difficult to to do the recording and showing people like the discipline and it's good things because I am not at that kind of level yet I'm trying to control myself and now let's look at this kind of BNL and the kind of day if I didn't manage my risk then what's gonna happen I'm gonna lose and I'm gonna lose a lot. <sighs> Even I lost myself, you can see that I never really break my risk management. But as that is the thing, if we only have as a risk management and our trading behavior is poor, eventually we we're gonna lose like bleeding to death. That's the reason why risk management but also self-management 
and manic ourselves is something that is so important. So I think I'm gonna take this day off to really reevaluate what I'm doing, and I'm sorry for letting me out of control like this. And so it keeps the video longer and longer. So I see you tomorrow. Hello YouTube. Right now is one of my lowest moment in the past two months where I lost really deep drawdown and it's not really about the drawdown. I think it's never really about the drawdown itself. But right now not only I'm losing on FTMO, which is I'm trying to protect my FTMO account as as much as I can because I'm recording. But my my fresh fund challenge, my live account, I'm losing a lot more. And this moment right here, my friend, is one of the moment I never want to do anything but just lying in bed and feeling bad about myself. The gold trade today, if I still hold it with my buyers, I should have around, I think, 10 R. But I didn't. Why? <clears throat> I have no idea. I had no idea. That is the thing. The person you are seeing right now is my, still myself, but my impulsive self. It's where I have the earth to enter the market. Is because if you are impulsive, then every time market open, we're gonna see market every move is a chance to make money. That's my biggest problem, and I'm trying to hold myself accountable. But still, because I was impulsive for years, and especially during the, the time when I trade crypto, when, when everything is just going up and up and up, and I was impulsive and I was still making money, that's the reason why I built up a really strong habit, which which not really helpful for me in the long term because it's bad habit, it's wrong thinking that any move can any movement in the market can make us money. And I always have the urge to enter the market. And today, if you ask me what if my buyers, it's like I had no idea and I'm still trading. And I buy and then I sell and then I, I doubt my, my, my sell and then I buy and then I started to believe that it's going to going up. So I, my buyer is up. But then somehow in my mind is create another pattern another illusion another trade and it's now it look why like it's gonna go going up down and i check my bias again and i shot and every time i do it it makes me feel less and less and less confident in my execution and eventually i trade a lot but i didn't make anything but i keep bleeding my cow to death and I was in deep drawdown in my like my live account, my my friend fund account, and right now I feel like it's really it even breathing is 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 hard. And I want you to to know that this this one the car moment right now is why sometimes I. I just feel I don't have a confidence to continue. The entire moment is where I am impulsive and where I take the trade just simply because I want to be in the market because in market equal make money. But in the reality it's not. And when the outcome speaking the difference, but because my beliefs might sometimes somehow Unconsciously, I still see every opportunity is making money, making money, making money. Consciously, I I want to stop myself, but 
That is why trading is difficult. We think we should do it, but somehow when we enter the trade, we do the opposite thing, and man, it's, it hurt. I want to show you the power of being disciplined, and one or two trades a day. But right now, things really getting difficult because I'm losing myself. And the moment when I start to lose myself, one day, two day, three day, it started to create a momentum, which really pull me backward, and it's really hard for me to stop. So, if you're seeing this right now, I'm I'm not sure if you will see this, but I want to make sure that if you are going to, then this moment is gonna be porous. And right now it's just maybe ten minutes after I lost a lot and. So right now, I still have a hope that I'm gonna find a way to to reflect, find a way to get my shit together, and find a way to complete the challenge. Not only completing the verification phase, but I want to do it in the right way. Because absolutely, I can see my edge. It's just right now, I don't see anything. And that is the thing, I don't see anything. And if I still keep trading, eventually I will destroy my account. So I see you uh, tomorrow. And sorry again for making the video longer and longer. Day 12. For trying to day. Stop out. Yes. So we are down more than one out a little bit. Yeah. Second trade, same session. So I'm trying to wait for Brian to trade up and then I'm gonna shop go. And this is the last trade of today. A0 session. Let's see if we can get the trade. Alright guys, so we are in the tree. Not really the best entry. Like I planned, but still. So, the trade will stop out. We call the day for two hour. So the reason that I came back to trading go, to be honest, because um, trading indices, I'm doing really nice, doing really well with indices, but there's some problem, especially with the spread, commission on another broker that I'm using there's a problem of copy trading and it's a little bit annoying that is that is a problem when I trade more than one account and eventually I have to pick an instrument that I can trade on all the accounts I'm using right now that's really why I'm coming back to go and I think it's gonna take me a little bit to get you to it. 
but as long as I manage risk and as long as I not really changing anything much in in the core values of my strategy, I think it should be fine. So I see you on the next day. Day 13 All right, guys. So uh, let me tell you what happened. So now this one trade, and obviously one trade, but I took three execution. So it it makes it into three trades, and I lost three R. So here's the thing. Market open around here and it trade rapidly down. I opened the trade right here and I got stopped out in 17 seconds. And I promised myself that I will not re entry, but I did. I got stopped out again in one minute. And then the last trade, the one that you saw, it didn't end well. So I got to tell you one thing is for the, for the best. For the past few days, you you can see that I have been trading really poorly because I got to an emotional pattern and imposed a behavior which I could not stop myself from doing stupid things. Because the, now this the first trade you saw right here, this trade, well, it is in the plan, okay, and it. If it fails, then it's, it's okay. But the last two, the next two execution where I just messing things around, it's not the plan, and it's difficult. When you are gonna stop for the session, and I will still come back in London. You know, for the past few days, even in FTMO, I really try to manage myself, but in my life count. In my Fred funds, I was regular. And right now, you can see, even I try really hard to stop myself from doing stupid things two trades a day in FTMO. But today, I eventually broke the rule and, and really just trade so poorly, and I feel very bad. But here's the thing I'm gonna come back in London. And I know this now this is more more than two trades a day. But the thing is I need to get back to my routing. I need to get back to my trading system. And right now it doesn't feel good. And I, I'm not sure if I can still recording because <sighs> recording, editing, trying to make everything together as a video it is so difficult it, it, especially when I lost my cell rises now you know what I really want to do I really want to increase my risk and I really I really want to I will think about it and I will let you know the game plan update hello YouTube so if you are seeing this video it means I decided to update the game plan so current situation, we are down around 4K and we only have us around 40 days left. And as you can see, if we count weekend, which is we, we have it around five weeks. So that means I have to eliminate around 10 days of weekend. So we, we basically have us around only one month of trading. 
and if you remember sorry <laughs> my dog so if you remember so last time phase one it took me like 30 days to make around uh, 10 percent which is sorry my dog which is 10 r 10 r in 30 days and right now i am down by 5k and the profit target is around 10k which is from the drawdown to profit target is 15k which is 15 r and i only have a 30 days of trading what does that mean that means highly likely is now i have a two kind of pressure currently i am in an impulsive and emotional trading period where i lost myself a lot and you can see i over trade i i took the trade i should not and yeah the equity curve is just straight down so right now the the first thing the first update is i'm gonna update my risk from 0 0.5 percent now it's one percent a trade and i still take two trades a day one trade one execution and one section so for every trade i only take one one execution so basically i'm gonna trade exactly like i trade in phase one and hopefully i can do that because right now you can see i just lost myself and i just lost my break fund account as well so basically things the situation is a little bit emotional <laughs> that's the reason why by increasing the risk to one percent of trade i actually allowing myself to be able to pass because now imagine that if i keep the same risk at 0 0.5 percent and i only have around 30 days of trading what does that mean does that mean i have to trade more or increase my trading frequencies if i want to pass because 15 r is not easy if you follow the rules and if you follow your plan we saw that in the phase one documentary that's the reason why by increasing the risk i actually allowing myself to trade less and by doing so i allow myself to be in sync with the marketplace with my trading plan again so basically this update is all about two trades a day one percent a trade and for every opportunity only one execution at a time and I just want you to know that the reason that I have a Zcash kind of update because I asked FTMO and there no free expansion in phase two. And if I fail the phase two or I fail to reach the profit target, I have to reset and do everything all over again from phase one. So in phase two, then nothing like there no free ex extension. And there are no free reset they do have free reset but you need to do from the phase one that's the reason why right now i need to change the plan so, so that i can pass the challenge because right now after almost like 20 days and i'm in trial down so now i have the trial down i have the trading time limit and they are putting pressure on on me that's really why right now if i want to pass i cannot pass by simply following the rule or following the plan but i need to increase my risk i hope that makes sense so now not only that we need to be disciplined but now we need to pass the challenge by winning that's the reason why increase the risk now is absolutely necessary thing to do. So I hope that it makes sense to you. And I see you on the next trading section. So every session now I'm gonna do one trade at a time like I because that is the best scenario and that is the best plan for for months. And and if I can stick to it, I'm gonna pass. So I see you on the next trading day let's stay strong and, and and this time let's really really focus 
So I just want to say one more thing. You you see that I still have a no regret of risking euro bond five percent in phase two, because if I follow my my plan, you you see I have all potential to risk my profit target in like thirty days. But because I was impulsive, I didn't follow my trading strategy. I didn't follow my trading rules. I didn't follow my routine. That's the reason why I failed. But right now, by increasing the risk, I actually giving me another chance to working out. And now I only have a, a few weeks left. And by increasing the risk, now I have only around seven trade left before I lose the challenge. So seven trade left, thirty days of trading, five thousand in Chardell. Let's see if we can pass the challenge and I will be so happy if we can and uh, so let's see if we can pass the challenge. I see you on the next trading section. Fourth trade, London session, new plan. Hello YouTube, so here is the first trade of new risk, 1%. And for this section, I only trade one trade, one execution. So it's really, take me some time to consider, but eventually I decided to go with 1%. So we have our seven trade, and every trade I'm gonna take it very seriously, one trade, one execution, one section. And I only trade in Acer and London. So hope, hopefully we can get our shit together and stick to the rule because I know for a fact that if I stick to the rule, the chance for me to passing the phase one is highly likely. And seven trades is actually a lot. If I follow the rule and not breaking anything. Because as you can see, even I risk 0 0.5% and I really was consistent, but because I lost myself for three days and I was bleeding my account to Yeah, I bleeding my account to like really badly. I lost like continuously and I overtrade, I over risk so now I'm gonna risk one percent, but I'm gonna be very, very careful in every single trade I took, and I'm gonna get it done the right way. So let's focus on this trade first. It's very volatile right now. So close the trade and that's done for one section. Now that is exactly how I usually trade and because see for I'm gonna show you today BNL. This is a little bit complicated. So today BNL the first morning is the session I lost three trades, three R and then I now using the new risk parameter which is one percent of trade and right now this trade I got 1.5 R and I still queue 1.5 R in one two three four five minutes and that's done I'm not going to trade anymore and this is exactly what I usually plan like what you see on episode one so now I can be weak and I can be complaining and I can be 
a victim of my talks, a victim of my loss, a victim of me losing my first one, phase one, phase, uh, sorry, phase two. Or I can just something up and take the challenge and pass it. And to be honest, when I allow myself to trade even 1%, but if I can manage my risk, if I can manage myself, then passing is not a problem. But when I cut my risk, and when I keep risking 0.5%, and I'm still impulsive, and I am still being sad, being upset about what already happened, it doesn't help. So the key right here is a mentality. The key right here is the mental health. The key right here is the energy, the, the invisible force right here. We, we always think that maybe we can cut the risk and we can save ourselves. Cutting the risk is one variable of the equation. Even I manage my risk and you can see I, I never risk more than one hour, but I over trade and I still killing my account slowly. But right now, this very moment, even I increase the risk. I took what I should and I check it out. That is what I, sh I usually do day in, day out. At this moment right here, it reinforced my belief that if we really want to be successful in this game, we need to trust ourselves more than ever. More than ever. Because during my downtime, I realized that there's no way for me to actually get out of that rabbit hole. There's no way for me to, to, to get out. It feels lonely and it feels defeat. Now I want you to see that. You can see right here, when I when I text 0 0.5%, you can see, very consistent, eventually it's just going up. But here when I started to lose, I still keeping the same risk. But I was bleeding my account, bleeding, bleeding, bleeding like for almost like one week. Everything I do is just losing. Everything I do is losing and losing and losing and you can see right here is a moment when I started to lose my my first fund account I started to get even more impulsive and it went even deeper in one day so what does it mean? does it mean risk management without self-control even without mental capital without we trust things in ourselves it is useless basically useless. We basically just bleeding ourselves to death. That's really why right now let's be calm and looking the situation. Right now, this very this morning I have a negative five thousand. So from negative five thousand to ten thousand, that is around fifteen thousand I need to win, right? And from negative five thousand to negative 20,000, I also have a 15,000 to lose. So, between what I need to win to pass the challenge and what I need to lose to lose the challenge, now it's the ratio is win, uh, the ratio is one to one. And basically, now it is exactly like what I should do, what I must do in the phase one. In the phase one, I have a 20,000 in drawdown and I have to make 20,000 to pass. So that is basically the same. The ratio is one to one. That's the reason why right now what I, what I am facing and the ratio that I have, it is basically the, the phase one all over again. It It is a phase two, I know, but what I need to do to pass this to turn up the situation is basically the phase one. Alright, that's the reason why I increase my risk.
because currently I do harvest around more than 40 days but if we minus we can we only have us around 30 35 trading days and now that doesn't sound good right especially i am very sensitive very emotional and very impulsive right now that's the reason why i changed the game plan to one percent and you can see right here I was bleeding my account to to death right here it doesn't feel nice and right now with this new game plan with this new spirit hopefully we can turn things around and pass the challenge so I will see you on the next day Day 13 all right guys so right now is the easier session the pair i'm trading today is hk 50 my favorite indice when it comes to easier trading right now we can see the price market open right here price breakout of the of this pattern and currently it is trading down uh sorry it is trading up to this key level right here so what does that mean that mean i am going to stick for a shot of a duty as a resistance level so i will let you know once i am in the trade right now the situation is a little bit annoying because i don't have a wi-fi somehow the electricity of my of my house is gone and i'm using i'm trading using 4g internet and <laughs> yeah hopefully nothing go wrong so i see you in the light tree at some point in trading we we're gonna get you to the uncertainty and we're gonna find a solution instead of complaining all right guys so now we are in the trade risking 2000 let's see if we can get this one this one is a breakout trade to be honest it went pretty obvious um in the opposite opposite way compared to my buyers unfortunately i still take it one trade one execution this is a breakout trade and everything will be fine as long as this remain the only trade for the section that is the thing so stop line around 65 pips probably here so 65 bit and indices they move very quick so if we get into the profit then it usually very quickly so uh, let's see how the trend fall one trade one execution one percent So, I lost. And that's it. That's done for today. I'm not going to take any, any trade. This time I need to be really strong and disciplined if I want to pass the challenge. So, it's not easy. I know, but one trade, one execution. And obviously, the entry were not so good. And yeah, but what's done is done. I'm gonna see you on the next section. We're gonna be strong. We are in charge now. Yeah. Second trade, London session.
on YouTube, so we are down around 2%, which is 2R for two trades, one in Asia and one in uh, London. So you can see that the trade in London, because I was in a coffee shop, so I could not speak with you, but right now I'm in home. And here is how it happened. Price trade right into my stop loss, you can see right here. And that is rally to my take profit. I think it's close to 4R. And to be honest, when I got stopped out, I still have the conviction that this trade is going to unfold and go into the upside. But here is the thing. When price going around here, I actually want to re-entry. So if I re-entry, actually, maybe I can win around 2R, right? But the thing is, today, re-entry can make me 2R. But because I know from my experiences that if I allow me to re-entry today, that means tomorrow, so the next day after tomorrow, and the next day after, I got to re-entry all over again. And the next time, highly likely that I'm going to lose. And I'm going to lose maybe a lot more. So this time, I'm going to just start, stick to my rule. And I really want to complete the challenge by following the rule. The new plan that we that, that we are using. 1% of trade, 2 trades a day, 1 trade exception and one execution at a time it is still a beautiful experiences seeing the trade unfold even is is without us right but <laughs> it's still good to see that we are correct and the bias is correct so next time maybe i need to be have a while a better safer stop lock or the timing need to be a little bit yeah so they're a little bit off between my timing and my entry also my stop lock need a little like taken care of so anyway i'm gonna see you next week i'm gonna show you the dashboard quickly so currently they didn't have the bet the dashboard low and i think if you didn't skip the video at all, maybe you have been with me with the up and down. And you know that from here, around this region right here, I started to be impulsive. And this this way I actually love myself and a lot of things happened during the cut period. So currently I am in a very deep drawdown. So you can see. So we started the new plan from 16 March. So it it pretty soon to actually see anything positively. That's the reason why I learned to just stick to the rule, to the plan and keep executing. With current balance, I think we have us around six trade left. Yeah. Six trade left before I lose the challenge so if i lose all the trade together then it's gonna be around three days and from here until now that is around 18 days and the next two days is weekend so it's gonna be 20 days so we have around 40 days left and with if we minus uh, weekend then exactly that we have still we have us around 30 day of trading and within 30, 30 day of trading i need to make 10,000 plus with 6,000 in drawdown that means around 16,000 equal to around 8 yeah hr is the risk value so i'm gonna see you next week Let's stay strong and let's stay 
motivated motivated even it's quite difficult during the time but even if I gonna lose I want to lose it I want to lose correctly follow the plan shutting the shutting my edge so I see you on the next week Day 15 So, first trade of the day, stop out. Second trade, London session. So the trade close. So we are we close for almost I think almost four R. So the first trade we lose one R. The second trade we close for almost four R. So we uh, close the day for yeah almost three R. So I think it's pretty good for one trade trading. So. We are back to almost break even, so let's stay focused and I see you on the next trading day. The reason that I don't want to talk too much because yeah, one trade, one execution, two trades a day, let's focus on what matter. The video is quite long, so I don't want to talk too much about focus, about analysis kind of stuff. So I see you on the next trading day. Day 16. So, welcome to the new day. My buy today for this pair is bullish. Yet, today we're going to see the price trade rapidly down in a zero session. And I lost one trade during a zero session. And in New York section, I have some kind of retracement. And technically, for me, it's right now. I want to see price trade higher because some co correlation with other indices and go and overall sentiment in market short term. So yeah, I'm gonna see you when we are in the right trade. So you can see we are in the trade. My buyers is bullish. I check the trade based on my buyers. Let's see how the trade unfold. And uh, right here you can see. Let me try to. So you can see my risk right now is around less than one R. One R is two thousand. So it's a less than one R. So yeah. Let's see how the trade eventually unfold. I got an entry and stop lot that I won. The reason that I still in the even is trade down because I already have a buyers. I already repair for the trade itself. So when it comes, I just execute with confidence. And if I lose, I let it be. And that what it takes to yeah, to be a trader. Like we have a plan and we stick to the plan. Even we trade different than our plans and as let we stick to the trading frequency and the trading rules that we have in the risk management plan. So let's see how the trend fall. One trade, one execution. 
one section. So you can see we uh, we close the tray for one R. Yeah, not uh, not good. But anyway, the tray a tray. What's done is done. I will see you on the next tray. Second trade, same session. All right, guys. So uh, I actually re in the tray. What does that mean? You all know on. Um, if you want to now, you probably know my rule. If I re-entry, that means just done for the day. Because my rule is one trade, one execution, one section. And when I re-entry, that means I have something or some reason that I believe that it is like correct to to be able to re-entry. But yeah, the price of re-entry is no trade throughout the day and this trade is a lecture of the day so let's see how it eventually unfold here is a new trade and that and yeah if you re-entry have a the risk of course but if I but as I told you we know the risk and if we still accept it then we execute and once we execute the trade, we be responsible for it, and we don't check any trade throughout the day. Okay. So we close the day. To be honest, I should have closed the trade a lot sooner. But that is the thing. Sometimes we we see our analysis prove to earth that the trade doesn't seem to be valid anymore. But we still try to hold it. So uh, I lost one R, and for the whole day, two trades, I lost two R. And that's it for today. Day 17. All right, guys, so this is the first trade of the day, A0 section, AK50 line market condition right here so uh, yes you can see right here I'm risking 1R 2000 let's see if we can actually have a trade as a winner one trade one execution one session
shit. What a beautiful tree. So, today we basically get seven R, more than seven R, almost H R, and you can see how beautiful everything you get. You get. I mean, you see for for yourself, everything is done beautifully, and I think it's gonna go to my tech profit, no doubt. And yeah, we uh, pass a fade too, so. That's quite surprising, and to be honest, yeah. So I am a little bit down. Like there are a lot of things going in my life, and you know when there's there are so many things going on in your life, and you have a all the reason to take impulsive and reckless trade, but it's just beautiful that I still stick to the plan. And let the trade just beautifully, beautifully unfold. I'm so grateful for it for myself. I'm so grateful for you all watching until now. And you can see, eventually, it went to my tech profit. So, what is the lesson here? I think one of the biggest lessons in this trade is that sometimes. All you're gonna do is survive. You never know the next trade is gonna be a beautiful trade in your favor. No, no drawdown whatsoever. Just beautifully, beautifully unfold at your plan. This is it, a very clean trade, and this doesn't appear every single day. But if we stick to our plan, eventually we will get the top trade. But don't expect it to appear every single day. All right, so yeah, maybe I'm gonna let myself cool down a little bit, and I see you on the desk floor. Three, two, one. Hello, YouTube. So welcome to the desk floor. Here is how it looks like right now. So let's see the metric, and let me tell you. This metric look ridiculous because there are a lot of people they're gonna zoom from the star to the finish and when they see it, it look like I go really big and it look like <laughs> I increase the risk to something like going all in or some shit because it look like so. But if you watch the video, you know that it was not. But to be honest, that was a really really Beautiful tree, and I managed them really, really well as well. So I'm grateful. This kind of situation where we got a really clean tree like this, it does not happen every day. But maybe I am lucky. But here's the thing. Even you want to be lucky, you need to survive and you need to stay in the game long enough. Because if we blow our account today, then maybe the since the next day is our lucky day, but we are not surviving. We are not surviving until the next day. So the really important lesson here is really try to stay in the game as long as we can. Eventually, your your lucky day, your clean trade, your beautiful no drawdown, high risk reward ratio trade, the trade that go perfectly to your plan, it will come. All right. So you can see most of my money were made in Indice, Go, and I lost in London. And you at thirty and forex, so they're pretty different compared to the phase one, right? So here, from here, if you have watched the video, then you know this kind of equity curve right here is the uh, right here is where I was respecting my plan, my risk par parameter. 
my trading frequencies, my daily limits. But eventually, here is when things get emotional. When I got out of my plan, when I lost my my price funds fade to account, when I got impulsive, when I got overtrade, and here you have it. Look, I got around more than ten losing trades in a row, and let me be honest, it's not easy. It's not easy to handle. We all know that we need to think in the probability in series of trades. But it is pretty easy said than done. During the cut period, it burned me out mentally, and so here you can see my uh, my trade copier dashboard, and here you have it look. So this is how the equity curve, the daily equity curve look like, and even it went down during the first few days, few weeks. But eventually, if I stick to the rule, I got out of the drawdown and keep going. Here, I was really close to profit target. Then I go down, 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 down. Even worse, over trade. Here, I got to change the game plan, and it took me four trading days to eventually come out of four days to actually come out of the drawdown. And yeah, eventually, I reached the Profit target. So this look pretty better than how it looked in FTMO, right? <laughs> but uh, anyway, you can see my win rate lower than phase one, obviously. And it's a bad trade, the worst trade. And here you have it low. So basically, in phase one, Monday is my best performing day but now every day seems to be equal so that means that at the end of the day it look like at my current level the trading day doesn't seem to be the thing I should be like concerned concern about yet like I should focus on self management because there are a lot of things going with my self emotionally sometimes you can see when I got impulsive you can see how I actually was bleeding my account so yeah even the car data is very important but right but right now in this phase I got impulsive more than once and I got over trade so my data is a little bit messing up this, that is something I need to be aware of, and that's why I will not trust the hub data. I, I still study it, but yeah, I will not trade based on it. I hope that makes sense. So, here you can see that on phase one, after around 31 trade, my win rate is around 48%. So, on phase two, you can see right here. During the time when I still stick to my rule, I got over trade a little bit here, but still managed to trade within the rule. You can see the win rate eventually come to around fifty-two percent. But then here is when I started to be over trading, three trades a day. Oh, not really. This is not from payroll, so that is in plan. So here you can see. Here is the equity curve when you see on the dashboard. I lost around ten trade in a row, and that is around one, two, three, four, five trading days, and it is just burn me out. And not only in trading, but in life, I got some family stuff. I got some, yeah, sometimes it's not only about trading thing, but like catch up with you, which some shit. <laughs> and that's when you, you got to deal with it at the same time. And 
my energy got a little bit like distracted. So here when I started to implies a new plan. And that's when I really try to stick to two trades a day. One or two thousand. Right here you can see. So basically from the moment when I change my plan, you can see I check around a trade. I win only three trade, but I managed to to get around fifteen thousand. And yeah, I got to my profit target. So that is the end of this phase two. And it took me one month of almost one month of recording. I think around twenty three days. So to be honest, this is not an easy video to watch. There are a lot of emotional emo there are a lot of emotion. There are a lot of emotional moments and there are a lot of losses <laughs> draw down and how I got mental breakdown and how I really try to get over it and how I change my game plan and focus on winning the challenge itself you know for some people I think they can actually endure their challenge with low risk and really taking their time because if you actually positive in phase two, you can do phase one all over again. But for me, that type of patient, it's just it's just impossible. It's just too much to do everything from the phase one. That's re that's the reason why I take my chance and I change the game plan a little bit. But I still recommend zero point five percent for the phase two if you are not like. Rushing. I mean, there are no reason to rush. At the end of the day, we are here to check the challenge and pass it. And once we pass it, we want to stay funded. Because it's annoying to check the challenge and lose the challenge and check the challenge lose a challenge I mean man it's just it's really annoying and this time I think I'm not really going to another platform trying to get funded kind of stuff maybe I need to slow down and really reevaluate myself my trading because even that I speak to the rule and eventually I pass the phase too but I know that they a risk of myself getting fell of the challenge. That is a possibility. I'm not here to tell you that, hey, I passed. You can you can do it too if I by my cost. I'm not here to tell you some kind of thing like that. But if you watch the video, you see the up and down, you know for a fact that I may fail again on my life phase. If I could not get my shit together and really, really stay mentally strong and stay disciplined and really ways for the high durability trade you can see like i try to trade daily and sometimes maybe it's a lot to you but for my personal journey that is an improvement because i usually take like five six trade in in a day but now I take two trades, sometimes one trade in a day. That is not easy for me. And every single day I still try to to be, be to be better. And I'm so grateful to have every one of you watching and sharing the story and beautiful things in your journey with me. Sometimes I get emotion, emotional. But that's just who I am, and I think if we can manage ourselves, that emotion can be something beautiful. That that emotion can be something that make us happy, that make us live this life to the fullest. I know as a trader, we should trade like a robot. We should control our emotion. We should we should be like this, like that. But when I I think. 
that that is just part of the whole picture. And if I am not emotional, if I, if I am not who I am, then probably I would never do the car video because it's not easy and people are gonna judge. People are gonna just see that everybody curlized it and they're gonna judge. But I'm here to read all the comments, so I will always do that and I will take everything and use it for my improvement. And I hope that you will find something beautiful in this video as well and take with you on your own journey. At the end of the day, my loss should not affect you mentally and emotionally and my win should not do the same. Stay objective, stay faithful in yourself, in your decision and what, what, what ever you do, believe in, in yourself and we are all warrior and let's stay strong i see you on the next video and again there are no problems there are no problems i always try my best but there are no problems doing this video already burned me out so hard so probably gonna take some time to recover yeah go somewhere thank you stay humble stay grateful and thank you thank you thank you Remember to leave a comment. I love reading your comment. Thank you.